Blessings to your friend. This is Marcus Stevenson Jr. Ministries. It is a joy and a privilege to be able to minister into your life each and every time we get this opportunity. I want you to share this, to call somebody, text somebody, let somebody know that this broadcast is on the air. You know, friend, we do not take for granted every opportunity we have to minister into your life. We know something will be said, something will be seen that will truly inspire you to continue to live for God. Stay tuned in. God has great things to get ready to minister into your heart. Haggai 1, let's start at verse 2. We're talking again about God's glorious house. The Bible said, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, This people say, The time is not come. The time that the Lord's house should be built. Is that in your Bible? So here's God saying, I hear what the folks are uttering. I hear what they're saying. The people are saying that the time has not come that my house should be built. It's amazing that we forget God hears everything. Sometimes we are saying, not so much with just our uh, lips, but sometimes we're saying it with our actions, that God's house is not the thing that's most important. Sometimes we're speaking with our actions that God's house does not need tending to. A lot of people, oh, I, you know, I love one thing about church. I believe in church. I believe in God. But our actions are showing that we're not caring about the things of God like we should care about those things of God. And here we see the prophet Haggai, he has to be the messenger that speaks and tells the people of God that God hear what they're saying. It's difficult as, as messengers sometimes to tell you that the message for the hour is that your attention is in the wrong area. It's difficult when you have to be the messenger to tell people that you're not attending to the things God wants you to attend to. And I find out that rather sometimes we want to give these messages just like Haggai, sometimes we just have to hear what God is saying. And we got to hear the ear, have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to us as His church. Because God knows what the church needs. God knows what we need. God knows what we have need of before we even ask Him for it. So Haggai said that the people said, the time has not come that the Lord house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai, the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses? Is that in your Bible? And this house lie waste. Now, I, I like the way he says this because he lets you know he's not just talking about your spiritual house here. He's talking about the natural house of God, and we know that throughout the Bible there's metaphors, there's allegory that represents other things. So you don't have to express and explain that to me. I'm a revelated preacher. You should know that. But he's letting us know that he's not just talking about you as God's house right here. He said, while you dwell in your natural seal houses, while you're hanging out at the apartment, while you're at the, at, the, at the duplex, while you're in your rooms and in your houses and adorning those places, you letting the church go to waste. Now, you got to think about this. Sometimes we don't think about why would God give us a church if he don't want us to attend it? Why would God give you a ministry for you not to be a part of it? And it's sad here that the prophet, who I'm sure they're looking at to prophesy smooth things, tell me my name, tell me something about my children, tell me something about cars and houses and spouses and money, that he has to prophesy to them that what you need to hear right now is that you got your focus on your agenda. And not on God's agenda. There's several of you that, that are seeking God and hearing from God in here. And you know as well as I know that this world is in a mess. This world is in trouble. Because the average so-called person, even the so-called Christian, have no focus back on the things of God. You're hearing stuff on Christian radio, on Christian television, how the so-called Christian people, how they're even talking down about church, how they're trying to talk to people and encourage folks that it ain't no big deal if you don't go to church no more. That is not what my Bible says. My Bible says not to forsake the assembling of yourselves together. 
as the manner of some has. And he said for us to provoke one another to love and good works before he ever said that. Do you not know once you start missing church and once you get out the house of God and once you get out the will of God and you start showing that you care more about your natural seal houses more than you care about the house of God that you're provoking other people not to love. And God is love. He that love it is of God. You're causing your children to look at God's house as being a place that's not important. You're causing family people. You even cause your boss to realize that they have more control over you than what God has over you. Because your boss realize that every time I need you, he'll be there. But every time that so-called God that you witness to me about needs you, he can't depend on you. Look at somebody and say, it get hot before it get cold. So the Bible said, is it time for you? I want you to think about this day and age and just think about what we're dealing with and think about what's going on. You got coronaviruses. It was just a virus, but now it's viruses. You got a depletion of materials, a, a depletion of natural resources here in this earth right now. We got wars and rumors of wars taking place. You got fear in our children going to school with all the shootings that's going on. And many of us, we see these things taking place, but if you're not very careful, Satan has blinded the minds of, of the people that don't believe the will of God. You sit here and hear the word and you hear what God is saying, but you make up in your mind, I just don't believe. I don't care about that. I got my own agenda. And what you fail to realize is when you fulfill your agenda, is that it's not really your agenda when it's out the will of God. It's Satan's agenda to get your focus off of what God has chosen for you in your life. I believe my Bible tells me in the book, I believe it's a, a, a actually in the book of Colossians, to set your affection on things above. When you think of affection, you think of your emotions, think of your heartfelt desires. You think of the things that's most important to you. I'm not affectionate with you like I'm affectionate with my wife. I set my affection on her. I set my emotions on her. I care about you, but I'll be doggone if I don't care about her. Come on, somebody. It's the same way with God. You should care about being a good employee. You should care about being a good mother and a good father and son. You should care about being a good student. But of all those affections, if you got your affection more on those things than you do on God, God is saying you need to pay attention to the time again. Is it time for you? Look at your neighbor and say, it ain't time for that. What does a team do when a team is losing? What does a team do when another team makes a run and that team starts getting ahead too much? The first thing the coach say is time out. And some of us need time out. You need to recollect. You need to re-strategize and really take inventory. And I'm not punching and throwing, but I am preaching because this is what God put in my spirit. Because God is concerned about his church. He's concerned about you. Many of us have ministries. Many of us have callings on our lives. But how can you be used when you don't take the time to follow the first principles of God? Remember the Bible said that when they ought to be teachers... They got to be taught. I wish I had some help here. The same thing over again because we never leave the first principles of God. And how can you tell me you've been taught something when you have heard to be faithful, when you've heard to be diligent, when you've heard to be persistent in coming to the house of God, and yet you're not following that? God said, how can I take you to grade two when you haven't graduated from grade one? God is not in the business of beating you up. God is in the business of elevating you. But God told me to encourage you to stop holding back your elevation. It's time to humble ourselves under the mighty hands of God so he can exalt, so he can elevate you in this season. There are people in your area, people in your society, people in your circle that need the knowledge that God wants to give you. But when you withhold from obeying the knowledge God has already given you, why would God give you more if you faithful in a few things? God, I make you rule over many things. Look to somebody and say, is it time for you to dwell in your sealed houses? Look at the spirit when it comes down to the church. You might see people on a Sunday, but ain't no sense even thinking about Wednesday. I'll say it again for the hearing impaired. You might see people on Sunday, but ain't no sense you even thinking about Wednesday. 
and we have picked up this traditional spirit now and when you got little little preachers like me that don't that, that, that don't mind speaking what thus saith the Lord I become the enemy you get real discerning ain't nothing to discern discern your book my Bible said while you dwell in your own sealed houses Things can come up. Things sometimes can get in the way. But if we're not very careful, we can just fall into a spirit where it's always a reason. It's always an excuse why I can't come to the house of God. And do you not know, just like we've said for years, there's always a blessing in your pressing. Some of y'all looking for the blessing, and God said, I'm looking for the pressing. You looking to be blessed, and God said, I'm looking for a press. If you'll just press again, if you'll just go when you don't feel like going, if you'll just present your body as a living sacrifice I have went when I didn't want to go I have preached when I didn't want to preach I found myself sometimes I've traveled just as far as eight or nine maybe even ten hours just to be in one or possibly two services and the service I weren't even preaching all because I knew that my presence was important. I just went there. I'm not saying trying to pat myself on the back. Some of the things I say for you all, because you're supposed to mark the perfect man. Are you so perfect you have flawed? No, but I got a perfect heart towards God. Thank you very much. So I just drove down to Texas just to be with my father just for one service. Immediately getting off work, and in my mind, all I'm thinking about is I just want to be a support. I just want to lift up the hand. First thing come to my mind is what the Bible said when Moses and Caleb was there, and they lifted up Moses' hand when he tried to go down. When 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 Caleb them saw him to, uh, hands up, he knew the people was prevailing. But when Moses' hand was down, he knew the people was losing. And some of you fail to realize that you lose when God's house lose. That if you let the house of God go down, you gonna lose anywhere. You job can't deliver you. Your job. Can't can't save you. Your job can't break demons off your children. Thank God for your job. God gave you a job. But don't take the thing God gave you and stop misusing the thing God gave you just for your own benefit. Look at somebody and say, it ain't time for that. Is it time for you? God is talking to you. It's not your neighbor. It's not your friend. It's not your loved one. He's asking you, is it time for you? Are you still here? Watch this. O ye to dwell in your sealed houses. And this house, no one talking to the preacher now, lie waste. What good is believing God for a building, believing God for a place where we can gather people together? What good is God giving us all these words if when we show up, we ain't got nobody to give it to? We don't want to cook, and then we get finished cooking food. Somebody don't eat it. Some of y'all probably was grieved yesterday. You was giving place there. Take it with you. Go ahead. Come on. Get yourself. We're not wasting this food. Why? Because you realize too much time, too much effort, too much diligence, too much money been spent. It's been too much invested for it to be wasted. Most of us don't even understand the prayer, the dedication, the fasting, the sacrificing we have to do. I don't say everything all the time, and you may take this how you want to take it, because sometimes people doubt you. I'm not trying to be a show off. I know my wife knows this. I probably could be a millionaire if I wasn't sacrificing for ministry. I know how to do construction. I got a music gift. I got gifts in, in other areas of business, but people sometimes don't see the sacrifice you make just to be there for them, and you don't owe me anything, but you owe God everything, and you Oh, to give God your all. And you ought to say, if my man of God can sacrifice, then I can sacrifice. I didn't get much on that note. It was okay when I was driving 45 minutes. But when you got to drive 20, all of a sudden, now it's complaining and murmuring and all this kind of stuff. No, 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 no. It ain't time for that. Hallelujah. I'm not trying to get in trouble. It's just what God put in my spirit. Some people, you put the church in their front yard, they still won't come. Amen. He said, and this how, how would you, how would you feel if your house, if you got, if you got in a situation and your house is going to go waste? Think about all the money you put in remodeling, all the money you paid on mortgages, all the money you paid on renting it, and it just started going to waste. Look how much God had invested in some of us. Giving us prophecies, giving you messages, giving you undeniable proof of his existence. And it's like, now I got what I wanted out of you, God. Now you can't get what you want out of me now, God. 
Now since I got what I want from you, I'll just let that stay there until I need you again. Amen. Glory to God. I had an auntie. I hope she ain't watching because I got a bunch of aunties. But I had an auntie. I always used to come over and eat food. And she never came over until food was done. And she always left with a plate. I don't never remember her offering to cook. Y'all must got some of them aunties. I never remember her offering to, to buy any food. It was always, I'm coming over to see you. But she wouldn't come to see us. She was coming to get a plate. Man, y'all ain't talking. And she was gone. God is not satisfied when we treat him any kind of way. It's not a condemn you message. It's an awaken you message. You need not to go in this new year without sacrificing before God. We talk about the sacrifice of Christ. Many people up this morning, and some of them probably should be, up talking about the birth of Jesus, how, how Christ was sacrificing to this world as a lamb, as a sacrifice for us. And thank God he was a sacrifice. But do you not know after he sacrificed, the Bible said what such sacrifices we ought to give to God so he can be well pleased. He was the example of a sacrifice so we can become a sacrifice. Amen. He says, is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste? Now, therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, three simple words. Let this register in your spirit. Consider your ways. I'll say it again. Consider your ways. We have to think about, no one's trying to upset you. Some people stay on the edge like they say. Some people, no matter what you preach, there's always something wrong with it. No one's trying to ruffle your feathers like this. But we need to consider. You know what's wrong with America right now? America hasn't considered their ways. You know what's wrong with this world? This world haven't considered their ways. You can't keep taking God out of things and think you're going to have the godly benefits in those things. I've seen people take time away from ministry to fix their marriage, and later on, they end up breaking up anyways. I've seen people take time away from God because they was having a mental issue, and later on, Satan took their mind anyways. God doesn't mind you taking away from things and, and taking time out from things, but he never desired for you to take time out from him. Amen? Consider your ways. How many people say, preacher, this may not be what I want to hear this morning. This may not be what I was expecting to hear this morning. But you know what? I'm going to consider my ways. I'm not going to let the house of God just sit here in my ways. I'm not going to know the doors of the church is open and I refuse to make myself available to come and attend the church. This ain't about just my ministry. If you feel God has chosen you to be with a man of God or a woman of God or to be in a church, that's where you need to be. And if you know God chose you to be here, be faithful here. Right. Amen. Amen. When God designed for you to be somewhere, he have chosen you to be there for your good. You know that's what God had to tell Abraham, told Abraham to leave his kinsfolks and go and sojourn in a certain land. And what some of you don't realize, it don't matter if all your folks belong to Mount Ebenezer or the Second Baptist or all them other places. When God tell you to leave that place and join into a certain land, it ain't got nothing to do with your natural family. God sent you there because he got a blessing with your name on it. How many folks have been blessed since you've been here? Now, I'm not giving a ministry promotion. I'm just saying this is what God sent you. This is where you need to be. Amen. Let me prove myself through some more word here. Let's go to 2 Chronicles 7. While you're flipping there, say, God, I'm going to consider my ways. I hope to God some people do. I, you know, going into this new year, I really want to see the best come out of so many people's lives. But you can't have the best to come out of your life when you put God on the tail end of everything. Jesus has to be the reason. He has to be the first thing. The first priority, he has to be exalted in your life. That's why the psalmist says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. What he was saying, you have to enlarge him. You have to see them greater than what other people see him. Some people don't see the need of ministry. Some people think, well, you know, it's just church. What is one day? What is one night going to mean? But you have to magnify him. <sighs> Hallelujah. 
Verse number 1. 2 Chronicles 7, verse 1. If you have it, say amen. Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven whew, and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifice and the glory. The glory of the Lord filled. <laughs> now no, it was after Solomon prayed. Many of us wonder why the glory of God ain't in the house because we don't pray. We want the glory to come down and make us pray. Oh, I know we don't want to talk now. We want the glory to come down, and after the glory come down, who I'm stirred up to pray now. But see, that's not how God operates. The Bible said after Solomon had prayed, here go the fire of God. Here go the presence of God. Here go the glory of God filling the house. It wasn't just in the house. It took up all the space in there. And that's what we need in God's house right now. I'm tired of just the pulpit being anointed. And in some places, I see sometimes the, the pews are more anointed than the pulpit. Everybody in the church should say the glory of God is in me. The glory of God's residing in me. And when we come in this house, if you got the glory and I got the glory, when we pack this house, the glory is packed in this house. But how can you get it when you don't pray? I got about three amens. You can't get it if you don't pray. The average Christian person does not seek God. I know some of y'all looking sad and depressed and saying, Preacher, you're just too hard today. How am I hard for telling you stuff you heard years ago? This is normal principle stuff. But look at where we've got. We haven't considered our ways. We wonder why this earth, why this world, why us as Christians are getting less anointed than we ever been. And God is saying, I want my house to be a glorious house again. But the house don't become glorious because you just want it glorious. You have to listen to my methods. You have to listen to my instructions. Uh, let me tell you how I want the house to be. But let me give you instructions on how the house going to get there. And God is saying, if my people which are called by my name, if they would humble themselves and pray, that's when the glory of fill this temple again. How much time do you give God in prayer? How much time do you spend? I'm talking about a face-to-face -face relationship with God in prayer. I'm talking about praying until you know I see results. I'm not talking about this pray on the whim thing. Just throw up a few words so I can say I prayed. So when the preacher say how many folk pray, I can sear my conscience and say, oh, I prayed. Did you pray when you filled out that application? Did you pray when you took that interview? Did you pray when you looked at that schedule? Did you really pray and put God first? My wife would tell you, I turned down thousands and thousands of dollars and thousands of dollars. Oh, because I knew God wouldn't bless me with a job, brother, that would take me away from the ministry he told me to fulfill. Some of you are in a place right now, you're at a crossroads, and the enemy wants you to feel like something is wrong. He wants you to fear, wants you to think folks don't do that no more. That's what's wrong with folks nowadays, because they don't put God first no more, but you ain't one of them folks. Amen. People think we just preach this stuff. I'm not just preaching this, and I ain't saying I ain't had failures, but I live what I preach. We have sacrifice. We have done things that seem crazy and oddballers to the natural corner man. But next time you wonder how we bless, how we anointed, let me tell you how. Because of the sacrifices that have pleased God. I'm not telling you to up and quit and leave anywhere. But what I'm telling you, when you put God first and you begin to pray honestly before God, God will bring this word back to your heart and mind. You can ask God just like Moses them did when they was up against the Red Sea and Pharaoh on one side. Some of y'all got bills on every side. You got family to take care of. And the devil got you thinking, this is my only way out. You can say, God, I'm just going to stand still and let you bring a deliverance here. And God will open up jobs. God will open up ways for you. God will make provision. God will cause people to call you who wasn't even looking at you and say I give you this position cause this position will keep you in church there's people in here who you may not even know this the reason why they stay so adamant the reason why they're so adamant about staying in God's house is because they have seen what God done for us do it for them too 
They've seen God open up doors. God open up jobs. God open up positions just to make way for them to have a schedule to attend their normal church services. Some of them call a hope that a revelation. I can't stay in my sealed house and let God's house go to waste. Look at your neighbor and say, what he done for one, he'll do for another. Can I finish my message? I just need about a few more minutes. 2 Chronicles 7 and 1. So the Bible said, and the glory of the Lord. Talk to me. Wait a minute. Solomon prays. Solomon seeks God. And after he seeks God, here goes signs and wonders and miracles. See, many times we want signs, wonders, and miracles, and after we see them, now all of a sudden, ooh, I got to get my prayer life back. No, he prays, and after he prays, here come the fire. Do you not know your prayer is what brings the fire? Now, why is the fire good? Because many times we say the water purifies. No, the water cleanses, but the fire purifies. Water cleanses you, but fire purifies you. That's what the Bible said, find me gold that's been tried, not in water. He didn't just want it clean. He wanted it purified. He wanted it in its purest form. And can I tell you the wrong with Christianity right now is because people don't see us Christians in our purest form. I got to find, whew. glory to God. They hear us talking love or cussing one another out on social media. They hear us talk in prayer, but we gossiping like we shouldn't be. Yes, it's real. Come on. Amen. Amen. Talk in unity, but can't even speak to people in the same congregation. Yes. You begin to pray, even when you want to hold some. The spirit of ministry, you say, you know you can't hold it and live for me. Yes. How dare you call yourself a Christian, and you can't speak to your fellow brother and sister? How can you say that you are anointed, and you walk around cussing folks out on a regular basis? Friend, I'm so thankful that you got a chance to hear the word of the Lord, to see the signs and wonders of God during this telecast. We prayerfully hope that this was not the last time that you stay connected with our ministry. Just like you was blessed during this broadcast, we truly believe that you will continually be blessed if you will continue to watch us each and every week on this same station at this same time. You know, friend, if you look on the screen, there's a number you can call. We want to pray with you for any prayer request you may have. Anything you believe in God for, we want to connect our faith with you. And more importantly, if there's a lack of salvation in your life, if you feel far from God, we want you to understand that the purpose of our ministry is to build your faith and to have you walking closer with God. Feel free to go to the phone right now. You can go to our website as well. You can connect with us through social media. Don't let this be a one-time event. Stay connected with us as this is a God-given connection. And as we go off the air, we want to remind you of the love of God and the hope of Christ. Blessings to you on behalf of Marcus Stevenson Jr. Ministries.